Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Easy Tramster here. So I'm taking a ride over to Roadrunner Harley uh, to meet up with Rob uh, and do another comparison video. Uh, this one's been a long time coming because we've done tons of versus videos, uh, old bike versus new, new bike versus new, and the one I always felt like we didn't have the chance to do because we didn't have our hands on a used one um, was the um, Fat Bob, old versus new. So my understanding is a used Fat Bob has come through the dealership and uh, we have an opportunity to put it on camera next to a new Fat Bob. Um, and I think it's gonna be a fantastic comparison considering how much they've changed. So let's, uh, let's, get, uh, let's get going on over there and uh, get these bikes next to each other and see what's up. Hey guys, here we are, Roadrunner Harley-Davidson in Goodyear, Arizona. I've got uh, a couple of beautiful motorcycles behind me, a couple of fat bobs, and right here is Rob. Not a fat Rob, though. Not a fat, well, I don't know, kind of a fat Rob. <laughs> so listen, uh, guys, Rob is going to do what he does best, and like we always do, he's going to walk around these motorcycles, tell us a little bit about these bikes. Um, but before we jump into that, um, I want Rob to tell us a little bit about himself, his motorcycling career. Um, you know where he where he's come from uh, and what stake he may or may not have in these videos Just so you guys know where this information is coming from Hey guys Rob here. So as was mentioned I'm uh, the store manager here at Roadrunner Harley-Davidson, but I don't do these videos as a sales pitch I don't do these videos um, because I think that the Harleys are the greatest thing since sliced bread I do these videos because I'm myself I'm an, a very avid motorcyclist um, I've owned upward of about 80 motorcycles in my lifetime I normally have somewhere between six and ten in my possession at once uh, currently, if you were to visit my garage, you'd find two Hondas, a Yamaha, a Suzuki, a Triumph. Um, and just last night, I actually bought a 1976 CB750 basket case. So I've got big hopes and dreams for that bike as well. But uh, as an avid motorcyclist, as someone that's owned a lot of bikes, as someone who also went to school to wrench on these bikes, I have an awful lot of insight and information I can share with you on these things. So today, we're going to do a comparison of these two beautiful motorcycles behind me. The uh, candy orange, looks a little red in here, but it's a candy orange 2013 FXDF Fat Bob and the black denim 2020 FXFB Fat Bob because now it's no longer a dyne, it's a soft tail. So I'm going to flip the camera around here and I'm going to talk about these a little bit and we'll see if we can get you guys some information that might make uh, deciding whether you want a new style or an older style a little bit easier thing for you. All right, guys, let's get at it. So as I said on the left here, we have a 2020 fat bob which is now a soft tail fat bob and behind it we have this beautiful 2013 dyna fat bob and as you can imagine with names like dyna and soft tail there's going to be quite a few differences but as you can see looking at these bikes it's very easy to tell they're the same machine um, you look at the large chunky tires on the front look at the handlebar setup you look at the tail end of the bike the way your rear fender is set up and you'll find a whole lot of similarities i'm going to point out a few things here and at some point i'm going to have uh, a little bit of an assist here so you can see some rider height comparisons as well. All right, so a lot of time in these videos, what people are really looking for is some of the performance comparisons, specifications, that sort of thing. So I put together some of the more critical stuff so we can talk about it. Um, both have their advantages for sure. In the engine size, obviously the bike closest to me being a 2020 is a Milwaukee 8. It's a 114 inch motor, so that's about 1900 cc's. The 2013 behind it is a 103 inch twin cam motor so that's about 1700 cc's roughly both of those rounded of course but that's about where you're at so engine size advantage obviously goes to the newer bike um, we'll talk about torque stock on the 103 is about 100 foot pounds stock on the milwaukee 8 is about 118 so you do get about a 20 percent bump in torque on the new motorcycle as well so we'll give that advantage to the new bike we talk about the rake the front end on these things very, very subtle difference. So on the 2013, they were running about a 29 degree rake. On the 2020, they're running about a 28 degree rake. Um, obviously by shortening that rake up, you get a little more nimbleness and agility out of the bike. So there's a very, very subtle edge to the 2020 on that one. Now you'll notice both bikes actually have dual discs up front. So I wouldn't give an advantage one way or another for that particular feature. They're both featured dual discs. Now the 2020 model is standard with anti-lock brakes and it does have inverted forks. So it may inch it out just a little bit there. Fuel capacity. This is one of the things some people have complained about with some of the newer Harley Davidsons. As I sit right here and look at these two bikes, it's pretty evident that that beautiful orange bike in the background has a bigger gas tank. We're talking five gallons on the old Dyna Fat Bob versus 3.6 gallons 
on the new soft tail fat bob. I guess there could be something to say for fuel mileage and economy. You're gonna get a little bit better mileage out of the newer motor, but me personally, I would much rather have the larger five gallon tank. Wheelbase on these bikes is very close. We're at 63.8 inches on the red or orange twin cam back there, and we're looking at 63.6 inches on the new one. So it's just a slight bit shorter. Ground clearance advantage, the older style actually edges, edges out the new bike at 4.7, I'm sorry, at 4.9 inches ground clearance, where the new bike is actually 4.7 inches ground clearance. And another interesting thing that stands out to me is despite having better ground clearance, you also have a lower ride height on the older motorcycle. Um, seat height laden on these bikes is 26.1 on the twin cam here. So we're gonna let Bryce throw a leg over here real quick. Let's see where he's at on the ground. So he's a little guy. You can see he's not totally flat-footed. Bryce, put your right foot up on the pegs for me. One thing you'll notice is that forward control is really forward. So despite having a lower seat height, there's a lot of reach there for shorter legs. I'm going to back up here and we're going to have him throw a leg over the new soft tail fat bob. So the soft tail fat bob is actually a hair taller at the seat, 27.7 inches versus that 26.1. And it gives up just a tiny bit of ground clearance, 4.7 versus 4.9. But they did shift the foot controls back a little bit. You'll notice it's actually easier for him to reach the foot pegs and the brake lever as well. Um, I'm a short rider myself. Bryce and I are very similar in stature. Uh, I can tell you that it's a much more comfortable ride for me on the newer one, primarily because they've moved those foot pegs back. So it makes quite a bit of difference. If I may, um, yeah, go ahead. one other thing I observed, just because coming right off of that bike that's sitting on this one, um, the inseam, as far as how narrow this bike is, uh, it's, it's noticeably narrower than that one. Right. Um, it felt like it was easier to manage the weight off the side stand than that one was. And yeah, I can tell there's a, a difference in the location of the, uh, the foot picks and controls. So yeah, I would have to agree this one. Uh, is definitely the more comfortable one um, in managing it, like around your, your round, around town stop and go, putting a foot down, taking a foot off. So, yeah. For sure. Um, and, and I think they tried to make it a little bit more universal. Obviously, there are female riders and shorter male riders and, you know, people of different heights that need to ride. And the older Fat Bobs, that was one of the chief complaints was you had to be really tall to comfortably handle and maneuver that particular motorcycle. Um, let's talk about lean angles for a different for a second here. So we just told you that the new fat bob is actually a little lower to the ground, which means you sacrifice some ground clearance, right? But despite that, it edges out the old Dyna fat bob and lean angle from the factory. You're getting about 32 degrees to the left on the new bike versus 31 on the older, and you're getting 31 degrees to the right versus 30 on the older. So you get a one degree advantage despite giving up two tenths of an inch ground clearance on the bikes. So they're both very good machines. They're both very different machines. Um, kind of like I've said in some of the comparisons before, what do they have in common? The name. Um, outside of that, they are running a different frame. They are running a different motor and transmission. They do have drastically different suspensions on them, but both are wonderful machines. I told you at the beginning of the video that I own a lot of motorcycles. One of them is actually a Dyna Fat Bob. I have a denim black Dyna Fat Bob in the garage. The controls had to be brought back a little bit for me to ride it, uh, and it, it's a great bike. I have no problems with it. I wouldn't mind maybe owning a new one someday. I kind of change bikes quite frequently. Um, change with the trends, change with my riding style, change with my riding destination even. I'm always building something, modifying something. But both are great motorcycles. I hope this has given you guys enough information to compare and contrast. Um, there are definitely some things that the Dyna Fat Bob edges out the new motorcycle in. Fuel capacity is a big one for me. I don't want to get gas every gas station. I want to put down the 200 miles I can get out of that five gallon tank on the Dyna Fat Bob. Um, some guys have pointed out the difference in lighting, obviously. The uh, Fat Bob has always been polarizing with its dual headlights. Some guys love it, some guys hate it, and now they came out with this all-new LED setup. Um, I wasn't really a fan at first, but I can tell you, having looked at these things every day for the last couple of years, it's actually started to grow on me quite a bit. So just like any other Harley-Davidson, the aftermarket is practically endless. You can modify anything you want, change anything you want, adapt and adjust anything you want, and make the ride exactly what you need it to be. If you guys have any questions at all about what we've talked about, hit us up in the comments. We'll do our best to give you an honest answer. Thank you. Well, guys, um, that's a, a great deal of information. Um, it, it addresses a lot of things. And from my perspective, being here, uh, walking around the bikes, sitting on both of them, um, what I can take away from this is um, considering that I have a, a soft tail slim, the fuel capacity, that was a big factor uh, when I bought that bike. And so 
for me, the, uh, the 2013 in this case um, kind of has my vote at least as far as fuel capacity goes. Um, I also prefer, in a way, uh, a more classic styled motorcycle. But what grabs my attention about this newer version of the Fat Bob is the, uh, the shorter wheelbase, the uh, improvement in suspension, um, and <clears throat> its power. It's, it's a smoother, in my opinion, um, it just having the soft tail, the, the, the M8 motor, it's a very smooth power delivery. So I feel that if I want to get aggressive in some twisties uh, up north when I go on a longer ride, um, having better throttle control will lend um, to, to uh, an easier, uh, more easily managed uh, handling platform through those twisties. So I guess what I'm saying is this would be a very difficult decision for me. Um, I've always liked the, uh, the classic look of the, uh, the older Fat Bobs, but it'd be hard for me to pass up the modernization of the newer one. So, um, but anyways, guys, uh, this has been awesome making this video. I'm glad Rob got a chance to tell you guys a little bit about himself and his history with motorcycles, and that's why I appreciate his insight as much as I do, and I spend as much time up here at the dealership as I do. Um, go ahead and like the video, guys, if it was anything that, uh, that, that benefited you. If you know somebody that would benefit from this that's in the market and doesn't know what to pick, share this video with them. Subscribe to the channel because we're going to do more of this stuff, and it's always good information. And as always, stay safe.